What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy and video, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. I'm also going to talk about some very important factors involving the markets, what's going on with the big bank earnings that just came out and more data. What you should be watching for as time progresses. Before I begin to delve all this information, before I talk about what's happening with Tesla Spy and a couple of other tickers out there, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 of them. And the offer ends very soon in just two weeks. Anyways, for tests, we're getting a little dip here in the markets for now. Same thing on SPY, but this is what we were expecting yesterday. I told you all that the market may dip a little bit before we see a very, very nice attempt to rebound. And that was the most likely possibility in terms of technicals. Instead, the market's dipping a little bit more as we ended up seeing a very, very mixed uh, result and a very, very mixed reaction to these big bank earnings. However, it's not the end of the world because once SPY approaches its support, we'll have to see if buyers try to defend it, especially considering how many puts there are that are going to be expiring. We're going to be watching some very, very key levels. So I'll break down more details about the charts in just a few minutes and talk about how things are looking. So in terms of all of these pieces of data do not forget that we had import and export prices coming out uh, we actually saw import prices go up a little bit higher than expected and then at 10 o'clock a.m we have the michigan consumer sentiment data coming out so expect some volatility at 10 a.m 30 minutes after the market opens we have the michigan inflationary expectations the five-year inflationary expectations and such and we'll see what happens with all of that coming out so watch for that data from michigan in terms of earnings we had jp morgan chase wells fargo blackrock and city JP Morgan Chase ended up doing relatively well. They topped estimates. They beat on EPS and revenue. On top of this, their overall guidance was not too bad. So with that, uh, with decent guidance overall and the fact that they beat on EPS and revenue, the share price is up quite a bit. So you can see the numbers are right over here. This is actually not bad whatsoever. So they did relatively well compared to everything else. Uh, Wells Fargo had so-so earnings. Uh, some things were good, some things not so good. Uh, their EPS was a beat with a dollar and twenty six cents. Revenue was a beat at twenty point eight six billion, which is quite good. However, I just want to call out that their net income decreased by eight percent in the quarter due to the impact of the higher interest rates and the funding costs. Not to mention the fact that the overall guidance is not the strongest, but it's kind of like the same as before, but not as strong as what we were anticipating from beforehand. They also set aside nine hundred thirty eight million dollars as provisions for credit losses. And uh, right over here, you guys can see their guidance was so-so. They're expecting a decline in the 7 to 9% range, which is part of why the share price is kind of flat. Not really doing a whole lot so far. For BlackRock, BlackRock ended up doing relatively well with earnings, but they hit a record. They also hit a record of $10.5 trillion in assets under management. Uh, moving forward, we did end up seeing some interesting price action. Revenue was up 11% to $4.73 billion. EPS was also... Uh, kind of a compete for them with about 10.48. Besides that, things were relatively well for them. And then we had Citigroup right over here. They beat on EPS, beat on revenue, but they said their profit fell 27% from a year earlier to $3.37 billion. Uh, not the best of news for them. Uh, things are slipping a little bit in terms of revenue, so things are a little mixed right over there in terms of those specific details. And the overall guidance was so-so. Not the strongest overall, just kind of so-so in my opinion. So that's the reason why it uh, isn't as strong. So most of these bank earnings were so-so and pretty good. I would say more good than bad. And I would say it's not the end of the world thus far. So more good than bad, if anything. And I would say some things are so-so in terms of guidance. So that's how the bank earnings look. In terms of our option shape for SPY, we have about 450,000 calls expiring. And we have over 800,000 puts expiring with 516 being max pain and 1.75 uh, being the puts to call ratio. For Tesla, I want to call out that Elon Musk's trip to India is scheduled for April 21st through the 22nd. It's going to be very interesting as he's very, very excited about that. Not to mention the fact that the robotax regulators say that Tesla hasn't contacted them about plans teased by Elon Musk just yet. So we'll see if anything changes. We'll have to see what happens uh, with many regulations and these regulators in Arizona, California, Nevada. What permits Tesla is going to need to be applying for. Excuse me. So that's going to be very important. We'll see what news comes out with this. Not the best of news as this is coming out. There's also still some news that was kind of negative from yesterday, which is still affecting Tesla a bit. So... But looking like we're dipping a bit more as we've lost this. We've failed to break past 175. 
Going to be looking for a very, very key retracement. If we fail to hold 172, look for 170.5. But somewhere between 167.8 to 170.5, we could see some buyers step in. And Tesla could actually attempt to rebound once again later on during the day, depending on what the reaction is to the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report at 10 o'clock a.m. So could Tesla dip more? Yes, it can. But at the end of the day, we could see an attempt to rebound it with the market. We're dipping with the market thus far, so long we'll be watching for this. SPY is coming down a bit, so we could retest 512.5 or so. But the last time we hit this, the last three times we hit 512.5, we did bounce. So we'll have to see if we get a bounce as well off that support. If we lose that, watch for 510, but there is potential for us to try to get a small little rebound from there. So I'll be watching for that very, very carefully, if anything. So watch and see how we end up reacting to that 512 area. Do we see some buyers defend us and push us back up to 515 and 516.5? And these higher levels, max pain is at 516 for SPY right now. So I could see us dip a little bit more and look for a re <coughs> excuse me, look for a rebound and attempt to push much higher if we end up breaking back up. Yesterday, SPY gap down pretty hard, trade sideways, and then we saw this thing start pushing higher. So it still could see an attempt to recover, but it needs a little bit more time. So watch and see how we end up holding support. But there is definitely potential. Uh, Another thing worth noting is that uh, the QQQ is coming down a little bit, so watch this 440 support. If you lose 440, look for 438, but I still think it's going to rebound at one of these retracement levels. Uh, we have our 0.618 retracement coming up as well. I just want to say that we could retrace a little bit towards 440, and we'll see if buyers defend us. The bank earnings were not massive beats overall. I would say they were kind of mixed, and we had more beats than misses, but a little bit more mixed here and there. So it, it wasn't really a smash through to help the market really rebound, but there is still potential for us to get a nice rebound later on, especially thanks to the options chain. So could we dip a bit more? Yes, we could, but look for a rebound later on. Watch and see where we base. If we base at 440, NVIDIA is also going to be testing 894 and then possibly 882 if that fails. Uh, could dip a little bit more, but we're going to be looking for a nice bounce after that. So it could retest 892 and rebound, or it could rebound right here. I do think it's going to try to bounce soon. It could come down a bit first into this uh, the 885 to about 892 range. Then we're going to be looking to see if buyers defend it. We're still within the range. NVIDIA is still holding up well, so we'll see how it does from that end. And then finally, for Apple, Apple's retracing to about... 172.5 to 172.86. I think it's going to come down to this range, and we'll have to see if we get a big bounce or not. But I do expect this to drop just a bit, and we'll have to see how things go from there. So it's going to be very important to watch for that. That is going to be key for Apple, and we'll see how things go. So I think Tesla could dip a bit more. We could drop to either 172 or even 170.5 or so in this range. And around 170 to 168, we could see buyers defend us and try to push us right back up. So we'll have to give this a little bit more time. Now, you could also argue Tesla has a head and shoulders like structure. If we lose 168, then I would turn a lot more bearish. I'd be expecting 165. But my gut tells me it might dip a bit and we could make an attempt to rebound at least temporarily and intraday. Don't forget, we have a lot of puts expiring, so give the market some time. We could dip a little bit more, but watch and see if buyers defend us because, once again, it's a Friday and we could see a lot of manipulation nonetheless. All right. So thank you for listening. Have a great day. I'll see you guys in just a few hours and peace out.